Hey everyone, uh, so today I'm doing something called the Coronavirus Confinement Challenge. It's a challenge made uh, by Animal Save Movement. And basically what it's having people do is confine themselves while they're in lockdown from coronavirus uh, into basically a situation like the average uh, farmed animal would be in. And so what I'm gonna be doing is getting inside of this cage and gonna be doing that for an hour. And this cage is quite small. I'll kind of stand up next to it uh, in a little bit to give you a general idea of what that's gonna look like. Uh, I'm kind of tall, um, and I think this is not gonna be super enjoyable. But uh, the reason we're doing this is to kind of raise awareness for what animals are going through every single day. I think a lot of us right now feel super disadvantaged um, and unlucky that we are being forced into our homes. We feel like the world is collapsing and all of these things, but in reality, this is happening to highly intelligent, sentient farm animals every single day, and this is their life. This is all they know. And so we're basically just doing this to kind of raise awareness. And so if this is something that you would like to do to also raise awareness for these animals, please join the Coronavirus Confinement Challenge um, and uh, try this out yourself and see, see what it's like, you know? Um, I'm gonna be doing this, I'm going to try to do this for an hour and I think it's gonna be nearly impossible. Um, and we have to understand that this is what these animals go through every single day. So I'm kind of um, enacting what it would be like to be a, a battery hen. The average battery hen, they have about the size of a piece of paper to stand on their entire life. And so that's pretty much what I'll be doing here. I'll be lying down in the cage. And also, as you can see, mine will be a little bit different because they definitely don't have a yoga mat or any form of padding or anything like that. To, um, to protect them or support them or any way. There's no comfort for these animals. It's, you know, it's completely irrelevant to the industry. So I'm gonna get in the cage and start up an hour timer and see how I go. And along the way, I'll give some updates and um, I think this will be quite the challenge. <sighs> okay, so uh, here's the cage. You can see I'm a lot bigger than this thing, um, but I've got a timer uh, set for an hour and let's do it. So my friend is going to help me get into the cage. This is going to be not super easy or fun. Okay. Oh. So I would suggest that already, like everything in my body doesn't want this to be happening. My, like I'm, I'm just, I think, I think the thing that's setting in like already is the like idea of what this is gonna be like for an hour. Like, my brain is saying things like, why, why are you doing this? Um, my neck, I can tell, is gonna hurt very soon. I'm confined, this is not nice. I would kill for a pillow. And like, I'm just trying to find a comfortable position and I just know it doesn't exist. So I think this is um, kind of a representation of the life that a, a chicken would live. Of course, that they would, um, they would be standing up, uh, an egg-laying hen. Um, and also at the same time, this is a lot like a gestation crate, except I would be, again, like able to stand. But um, I think if you go ahead and give this a try, you'll kind of very quickly start to understand what these animals go through. And so vegan or not, activist or not, I highly recommend you think about at least considering doing this for 10 minutes even and see what you think about it. And I'm not actually a particularly cla claustrophobic person, um, but this is still really, really not comfortable. And just think about how different the mindset would be if you knew, like we do, that we'll be able to leave this situation. Like these animals are smart enough, of course, where they're able to know that there's no leaving for them. This is their fate for the rest of their lives. I know for a fact that in 56 minutes or whatever, I'm gonna be able to leave. These animals have to go their entire lives, their entire existence is nothing but this. 
And like, I'm trying to, I'm trying to meditate. I'm trying to find like a position where I'm not in pain so that I can at least like try and like slow my breathing down or something like that. And it just doesn't exist. Like it's, I'm always on metal or I'm always on something, some hard material, you know? And that's like, look at like a gestation crate. Gestation crates, those animals are on concrete or like steel bars. Those are the two options for materials to be on. And like, it's absolutely insane. Like we can't even imagine the life that, that's been given to them. It's been forced on them. It's like already like my, the muscles in my back. And I stretched before I got in here because I knew this was going to be a pain in the ass. Like the muscles in my back are like contracting. There's just no relief, you know? There's no, there's no comfort. There's no way to be not thinking about the position that you're in and the pain. Like my head is just jammed against this metal and there's just no way to be comfortable. Like imagine, imagine like multiple years of this. of just always craving just for once, just like one opportunity to leave. I think the saddest part is, is the ease at which these animals are completely forgotten about within society. Very few people, you know, go about their day thinking about what these animals are going through. And I think, I mean, like imagine if every person around the world watched farm footage or slaughterhouse footage or footage of animals being transported regardless of what it is and then if if they were to be put into confinement like this i think the connection would be so simple we just have to raise awareness and continue educating and doing all these things It's funny because you always, you see like the, I, I just realized, like you see the pigs who will like bite the bars or like, um, like some of the animals that will do something like that. And I just like, subcon or, um, I just subconsciously started playing with this bar, except the sad thing for me is that I know I can get out if I wanted to. These animals can't, they have no exit. So here comes Zuli. This is actually very appropriate. So Zuli is a chicken that we pulled out of a, uh, hey Zuli. I think she's very confused. Zuli, say hi for the camera. You probably can't see her. Zuli's a uh, rescue chicken that we pulled out of, a, uh, of an egg laying farm here in uh, Bali. Hi. I think she's very confused. Uh, and Zuli would have spent her entire life in a cage about this size, so. Um, we actually went in and uh, grabbed her. We liberated Zuli and now she lives with us and I think she's very happy. Uh, when we brought her back, she had never, um, she'd never seen the sky, she'd never seen grass or anything like that. And it was so strange, I guess it makes sense, but it was, it was odd. We, uh, we brought her back and she'd never of course stepped out of this tiny little cage that she shared with another chicken. Uh, and there were thousands of chickens in this, in this shed. Um, and so yeah, she, uh, she, um, we bring her back and we put her onto the grass and uh, she didn't move at all. She didn't move for like minutes. And I think it's, she'd never stepped on the grass before. So she was A, confused and B, um, she didn't know that she could move, you know? And now since then, we've gotten to watch her discover all of these things she'd never done. She'd never, she'd never flapped her wings. She'd never, she doesn't really fly, but she bounces. She'd never, um, jumped or done any of these natural things. She now takes dirt baths, she digs holes, um, she scratches the ground and, and digs up little insects and stuff like that. And I guess that's not the nicest thing in the world, but that's how she survives. And now she's pecking my phone. Hopefully she'll turn the timer off and I can come out. We take everything from these animals. 
Hey. <laughs> I'm in a vulnerable position. You're not helping. We take everything from them. You know, we take their freedom. We take any happiness they could ever have. We take their children. We take what comes from their bodies. And then eventually we take their lives. It's completely unnecessary that we do this. No animal needs to be locked in a cage. It's so sad. It's so, so, so sad because this is, I mean, this isn't happening to one or two animals. This is billions and billions of animals. This scale is something you couldn't even fathom because I think about it often and I still have yet to truly understand what this is actually like. And, uh, it's just so sad, man. Like this is the, this is what the average animal on, hum on, on planet Earth, this is what the average animal on planet Earth experiences because there's such a, the scales are so off when it comes to biodiversity. We've destroyed almost all of the natural habitat and natural wildlife and replaced it with factory farms. Just like the bars end up like digging into your skin in every way. And this is where it gets really, really, really frustrating and difficult is once you, can't even find a place to sit where it's not really excruciating. <sighs> my back's hurting. My head, it's like, the, the head is like, my head's the worst part actually. It's just jamming into the back of this cage. And like, oh, I can't even imagine if I was on concrete right now. I'm on a yoga mat and it's, it's two parts. It's folded in half. If I was on concrete right now, I'd be out of this cage already, no question. And most animals are either on concrete or chickens in this case. They're on this, they're standing on this with their feet like this. It's crazy because like, I meditate twice a day, every day, and it's usually so easy. And it's such an enjoyable experience. And it's very easy to keep like your body still. And here, like I really am trying to like slow down enough where I can only focus on my breath. And I just can't push past the discomfort of lying like this, which is terrifying because then the animals must just think about it all the time. That's all they're aware of, it's just the pain. I wonder if she's thinking like, oh, how the tables have turned. Wow, Zuli, Zuli, no way. <laughs> I guess she's just making the experience more realistic for me. And as I'm like sitting in here, I'm kind of getting flashbacks. When I was in um, Australia with uh, Leah Dollinger filming for Planet Vegan, um, we went into two different farms. We went into a battery hen farm and also a, um, a gestation crate farm for pigs. And uh, the looks, like when you looked into the eyes of the mothers in that pig farm, like they were so defeated and like limp and just numb. And like after an hour or however long I'll make it, you kind of start to understand what it would be like a little bit at least on a much smaller scale of being confined like this your whole life. And you'd just be completely empty. There would be nothing left. You'd be a, like a completely empty soul. Because what else, what is there? If you only know immense suffering, you lose everything else. A sight of everything else is gone. And I'm not even really suffering that much. This is uncomfortable, but that's about it. You know, like, I haven't just, you know, seen my children all be taken away from me year after year. It's just crazy to think about. And we do this to these animals for a flavor, 
for bacon, though. It's crazy. So I would really, really ask you, and beg you even, to just stop doing that. I wasn't vegan for a very long time, but the second I learned about it, and definitely the second I stepped into one of these places, I think it becomes so, so, so clear that it's actually not something we would want for ourselves and we would never want to support for someone else. And it's so easy, man. It's so easy to stop supporting it. There's vegan restaurants all over the world. You can get beans and rice, veggies, legumes, seeds, nuts, pasta, whole grains. Eat it all. You'll be healthier, you'll live longer, you'll have a happier life, and you'll stop supporting slaughterhouses. What more could you ask for? <sighs> I, think it's, I think it's been about half an hour, if I have to guess, which is really not a good sign, because this is starting to really, really hurt. Has it been an hour? Okay, so actually that was super surprising. I thought I was about a half an hour, um, and that was an hour. So I'm now gonna stay here. Um, it actually was more doable, so I'm gonna stay here, I think, at least for 24 hours. Nope, just kidding, because Zuli's gonna come peck me. I can feel this. Ah, ah, Zuli. No. I can do this. Watch out. Oh. Oh my God. Oh, jeez. Oh. Oh my God, this hurts. Oh. Oh, my neck. Ow, Zoli, don't. <laughs> Please, Zoli. Hey, come here. We're gonna hang out together. No? We're not gonna hang out? Come on. So, what have we learned? Um, <laughs> we've learned that the chicken I li live with is not super interested in not pecking me. Oh, this is crazy, man. I've got like, I've just got marks from the bars. And you see this all the time in like factory farm animals. And of course this is nothing, but like they definitely were digging into my skin. I've got like a bump here. My back is so, so, so sore. Oh. So what you can do if you wanna help is first off, join the challenge. Uh, it's hashtag coronavirus uh, confinement challenge. It's being run by Animal Save Movement. You can check out their uh, page. I will link it in the description. Um, leave a comment. Do you think you could handle an hour in a cage? Um, and by the way, if you join the challenge, you don't have to like have a cage. You can do it under a desk or under a bed or something like that. Just be in a confined area for as long as you think is, is reasonable. Um, I just did it for an hour and honestly, like, I'm probably gonna go lie down because like my, my back and my hips are super sore. I had my legs up pretty much the whole time. Of course, the message from this is while we're in lockdown, first off, we should appreciate the freedom that we have in many ways, you know? Um, I think that being confined to an apartment, or especially a small apartment or house is not a fun thing. Um, but at the same time, we should be very grateful that for the time that we've already spent outdoors in the, in the world, and also look at others who do not have that freedom, regardless of whether they're human or non-human, and we should do everything in our power that we can to help end the industries and end um, the entities that are confining others, that are enslaving others, that are torturing others, giving others pain that we couldn't even imagine. We should do what we can in our lives to help end that. One of the biggest things you can do is to go vegan. I know that everyone hears that and they're like, oh, it's too inconvenient. I bet it's a lot more convenient than being stuck inside of a cage your entire life or having your throat slit in a slaughterhouse. 
And that's what we need to ask. It's baseline empathy. It's simply about asking, would I want that to happen to me? And if you wouldn't want that happen to you, if you wouldn't want that happening to you, just like Zuli didn't, Zuli was not in a good place. And now, <laughs> and now she loves her life from what we can tell. Right, Zuli? <laughs>